Hey everyone, and welcome back. It's that time again, five packages, time for another mailbag. Let's get started. First one up, we have this one here. Um, this one, a little bit pricey, but I kind of had no choice. Uh, $17.35, ordered November 29th. I think a lot of them will be ordered around that time. Um, received them December 16th. I believe everything in this, aside from one package, comes from a... Uh, Black Friday sale. Yeah, this is exactly what I expect it to be, which is great. You know what it is yet? There we go. So these are uh, five thermal electric coolers or thermoelectric devices, Peltier devices, if you will. Um, what happened is my other ones, uh, well, I broke one and then another one was faulty. And then I think actually two were faulty and two are in use. So I couldn't continue my projects on that uh, sort of cooled chamber, if you remember correctly. Um, so yeah. I've decided that I can no longer use the thermal tape because it doesn't come off these surfaces. It's actually really good uh, tape. It works extremely well, but I need a reusable solution. So I'm going to have to go with thermal compound and probably a lower quality one at that. So, uh, you know, because these, te these tests will be used repeatedly. Um, so then I can do some experiments with this. I actually have a plan to use you know, about 10 of these in experiment uh, this summer. Uh, might actually do it actually in the dead of winter. It'll it'll depend on a lot of things, um, budget, time, and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I needed to restock on techs. And um, here they are. So basically, if you don't know what they are, these are basically a semiconductor device between two ceramic plates. And when you heat one side and cool the other, when there's a differential, temperature differential between the two, you create a voltage across the leads here, then you put a load and you get a current flow. And inversely, uh, if you put a current through it, if you put this on a power source, one side will uh, heat up, the other side will cool down. And if you can get the heat away from the hot side, then the cold side will become very cold, like basically it'll freeze condensation in the air. And if you put a big heat sink on it and move air through it, then you'll cool that air. So the little uh, 12 volt, plug-in um, coolers that you see for, for automotive, they use these things. Um, heated and cooled seats these days use these kinds of things too. They are not very expensive, they're just more expensive to, to manage. So you have to like check the temperature of both sides and make sure you're flowing enough air across the, uh, across the device. But yeah, I'm gonna play with some more of these. I have to figure out some sort of clamping solution for my uh, refrigeration testing. But other than that, I'll be pretty much good to go. I'm on to the next one. Next up, we have this one here, which I'm pretty excited about because the label says CCTV camera, but it is not a CCTV camera. I already have a CCTV style camera. Um, this was $51.61, November 27th to December 13th. I believe I got this on Black Friday on AliExpress, but, as soon as Banggood had sent me uh, this camera, link in the description, I decided I needed some new lenses because, like I said, this is not only a microscope camera, it just happens to be because I believe the extension uh, threaded onto here, and the lens, 35mm, uh, which is pretty long for a tiny sensor. So I got two lenses. These are zoom lenses. Uh, so this one is 2.8 to 12 millimeter, and this one is 5 to 50 millimeter. And so I'm hoping they are any good at all. And then I can actually start using my camera as a like a, a camera, like a like a zooming camera. Okay, so this would be 5 to 50. Is that locked? No, it's just stiff. Oh boy, that doesn't feel high quality like the lens that is on here. I also see it's very narrow. So I'm wondering if there's these are even the right lenses. I'm a little doubtful. 
I hope they are. So what do we have here? I thought there was dust on this, but I think it's actually seeing the reflection of the lights here. Okay, okay. So yeah, there's your aperture, there's your focus, and there's your zoom. I'm gonna have to see if it fits on the camera. So that was, yeah, 5 to 50, and then this one here. Um, if these don't fit this thing, it's not the end of the world because these are the correct size for a Raspberry Pi high quality camera. So here we go, 2.8 to 12. Okay, that one feels a little bit better. Open, closed, and... Oh no, this is the zoom, wide to telephoto. Oh, look at that, you can see the whole element move. Okay, so this is the... F whoa. The focus also moves the element. Huh. Okay, well, we're going to have to attach this and see if it works. Now, here's hoping that it's the right thread, because um, if not, the other option is we try 3D printing an adapter. And the other option after that is um, we buy Raspberry Pi. Looks like it will be the right threads. Yes, it is. Okay, now we don't know anything about the if the image circle is going to be proper or anything. So for that, we have to do some tests. So before doing some tests, we're going to have to put the old one back on to get a baseline. I'm going to put something down here on my desk so we can see. And then we're going to compare the baseline, this original one, to these new ones here. And hope they are any good at all. All right, I'm all set up here. Uh, so up there, this is where the camera is pointing. And there is uh, roughly two feet, you know, something around uh, 60 centimeters, probably a bit more actually of distance, working height between the lens and this here. So let me bring in that image now. So there you can see, there's my hand going over it. Um, that's So that's the 35 mil uh, lens on the camera. That's the one it shipped with. And now, without moving anything, I'm going to unscrew the lens and screw on, uh, first of all, the 5 to 50 mil lens to get the most range. And disaster struck. Um, I forgot to press record on the camera, so I'm just doing this as a voiceover in the editor. But it is not the correct lens for this camera. I mean, it does work. As you can see, this is at the uh, five mil end and I'm zooming you in to the 50 mil end. So it does function, but the lens is too far away from the sensor in order to uh, properly focus throughout its entire range. So here I am trying to adjust the focus. It's a little hard to do in OBS because uh, this microscope camera does have a little bit of latency through the USB, which is not really there through the HDMI. That's a different story altogether. But there you go. You can see that my hand is a little bit more in focus than the board because it's just it's just too uh, razor thin a uh, focus. Here's the other lens, the 2.8 to 12, and at 2.8 millimeters of zoom, it just cannot focus. the The lens is too far away from the sensor. Uh, and this is without the little ring attached. And this is zoomed in now to 12 millimeters. And again, it cannot focus at that length. So this is more like something you would use outdoors to shoot uh, far away. Uh, not so much something that you would use, you know, inside your workbench at those distances. It's really best as a security camera lens. Next one up, we have this one here. I don't think this one's too interesting. $3.69, November 29th, December 16th. And yeah, everything is up in price because uh, shipping is absolutely insane, uh, especially to Canada. Yeah, so a little bit disappointing. It's uh, 20 of these uh, female pin headers, but in the uh, four by one setup. So there's, ma. Uh, you know what, I should get you closer. So this is just what it is. It's just these little uh, four by one pin headers. My God, you probably can't see anything. Professional YouTuber, everyone. Um, 
and so yeah, these uh, you know pin headers go in them. But basically, the deal is that sometimes you just need three, or two, or three, or four, or whatever, and they're kind of a pain in the butt to break apart because they never break clean on the edge there, so it always looks really silly. So you know, I'm getting them in different sizes, and when I need them, I can replenish them. But looking at the you know my other collections here, it seems like I didn't get very much for my money, so maybe I'm going to hold off on buying any more of these until the prices calm down. For the penultimate package, we've got this one here, um, $8.62, is that what that says? November 29th to December 16th. Again, a lot of these packages were like in the same um, combined shipping package. I tend to try to buy things all at once to try to save on shipping, but it doesn't always work. But at least there's, it's less likely to get lost when there's a whole bunch of them in a big envelope. Okay, uh, these guys, you'll need to get a little closer still, and I'll give you a look at what these are. So what is this? Well, this is a module. Uh, I got three of them because I think it's going to be interesting to play with. Um, a lot of you may remember the INA219 module, this guy here. Um, that I made its little uh, DigiSpark OLED and uh, the INA219. This one here, I don't know if it's written here, I might have to get it. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, but it has uh, the same deal, but it has three separate channels. I believe it communicates over I squared C, same as before, but yeah, you basically have uh, three channels. And I'm kind of excited to take a look at that because it would be nice to have a scaled up version of this, maybe on a TFT display, or maybe uh, simply it scrolls through them, or maybe the same OLED. Um, like this, we can check the voltages, or the currents I should say, on like a battery pack, like this. This is a holder for three 18650 cells. And I think it'd be interesting if we used something like this between the channels of all the cells and then maybe another one like this to check the whole pack. So that's my thought. It's going to take me a little bit. Please, please don't be in such a hurry because, you know, this will involve programming and we all know how daft I am at that. But it does look like it's I squared C here. And I don't know what CRI and WAR means and TC. Oh God, whatever. We will figure it out together uh, when I make a video on it. So if you want to see this, make sure you are subscribed. And for the last one of the day, it is this one here. Um, this is actually sent to me by a company. Uh, of course, we didn't exchange any money. They just sent me this product, asked me, you know, take a look at it. And I said that would be fine. Make sure there's no information on that. This is a microscope, and I feel like it's very similar to one of the microscopes that uh, Gadget Reboot got from Banggood. Um, ooh, fancy. So again, always looking to improve my YouTubing game here. I'm going to take a look at this. Oh, that's a, you know what? That's a big screen. Much bigger than I thought. Hmm. Interesting. So it has T-Flash, micro SD, uh, LED brightness thing. It has a micro USB here. Very interesting. But yeah, this is, this is big. Like this is struggling to find a scale here. This is 16 centimeters across, but I can't really do the diagonal on my bench here. So that's interesting. Put that off to the side so it doesn't reflect me. So yeah, Enlov is the company that sent this to me. Looks like there's no USB brick in here. No, nope, doesn't seem like it. There is a USB cable. Probably have a brick kicking around somewhere. And yeah, base, not not as heavy as I thought it should be. 
Oh my god, this thing is tightened right down. Hopefully it fits one of the two wrenches I have at hand. It does. There is no way I would have done that by hand. That's a uh, 12 millimeter. There we go. Looks like it has a little locking mechanism here. It's probably why it was stiff, it needed to be. That's okay. Quite a bit of tension on that, probably want some more tension. But this is not... This ring here should be keyed as well, like it should be a mechanical thing. But it's not very, not very easy to tension. Yeah, I don't know. There's a tension for the up and down. Okay, and then this should just go in like this, but you guys won't be able to see it. Yeah, it looks like my filming setup might be too high. Oh, that's not a, you know what? That's not a good angle. <laughs> there you go, fill up your screen here. Um, so yeah, that's not a good angle for my work at the bench, but uh, we're gonna have to put stuff under here and take a look at what it looks like. Well, I just couldn't help myself. I've been playing with this thing for over half an hour now. Um, you know what, it's surprisingly good. There's a few things I don't like with it, but overall, it's uh, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. I will put some footage of the um, you know of the microscope in action on your screen right now. But this is just a small sample. Um, come by for the full review. Um, the the TLDR is you can definitely have this magnifying enough to solder under, and have the space to solder under. So. If you're wondering about that, absolutely it works. Um, and also you can get ridiculously small. Um, the full screen here, um, which I still haven't measured, oh well, doesn't really matter. Uh, the full screen can fit a, a SOT23 package. Um, it'll go over the edges of the screen. So, I mean, this thing, it's pretty cool. Um, I do have that pluggable microscope, which I really like, but there is something about having one that you don't need a computer for. I kind of wish this one could plug into the computer. It does not. Um, but at the same time, you know, diff different tools for different applications. This is one of them. The pluggable one is a totally different one. And then the uh, industrial camera I have, that's also a different one. This one here, it might be for you. You'll have to wait for the review though. And so these five items make up today's mailbag. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons. Uh, they are the patron saints of patience uh, because I haven't been releasing videos uh, that much this month. Um, not even close to as many as I wanted to. So I thank you folks for being patient. And they donate the funds that make this possible. Um, it's a very trying time for me this time of year, getting to the end of the old bank account there, because school is restarting in January, but the the Patreon payments have made it so I could keep ordering mailbag items and um, keep the channel rolling and keep the ideas coming through. I also want to thank you viewers and subscribers, um, because you are unsung. Uh, you're the reason why companies want to send me stuff like this for me to take a look at and I think it benefits uh, everyone and so yeah the affiliate links for all this stuff is in the description if you want to pick up your own and if you just want to wait for the review that's fine too I'll see you there thanks for watching